Hey guys, and I do mean guys. I've mentioned before that the analytics for my channel show that my viewers are just about 100% male. So please, if there are any females out there interested in me, let me know. Uh, no thanks. I don't think we're really on the same wavelength. See what I did there? Story of my life. While some of you have indicated that you'd like me to get back to doing some videos on antique radios, and I've got a short one for you today. I've also gotten some feedback that I can sound a little stiff on these videos, and I think mostly that's because I don't show my face. I've noticed that most of the truly successful people on YouTube show their faces all the time and they're on camera. Whereas I tend to use my hands a lot. What can I say? I'm Italian. Well, just to show you that I'm a personable guy and easy to relate to, I'm going to show my face in this little section here right now. There I am. What do you think? And I'll just let that play along so you can look at my comforting face as I do the video. When I first started on YouTube, my focus really was on antique radios. And this is one of the first ones I repaired on YouTube. Now, if you saw those earlier videos, you know that this radio was quite the challenge. Not only did I have to do the electronic restoration, but I had to almost completely rebuild this case. Well, maybe not rebuild it, but I certainly had to do a lot of cosmetic surgery. In fact, I believe most of this corner was missing, and I actually sculpted these pieces back into shape. It was a lot of work, and I'm really proud at how this radio turned out. If you're interested in seeing more about the restoration of this radio, I'll leave a link in the description. Now, when I wrapped up the series on this video, I noted that I was very happy again with how it turned out, except for the cloudiness of this lens. As you can see, it's a grim yellow and very difficult to see through, while originally it was clear plastic. Well, recently somebody left a comment in one of those videos asking if I had ever found a suitable replacement for this lens. I actually hadn't, and they suggested I check out a website that makes reproduction dials. And sure enough, they had a replacement for the Emerson 108, so I ordered it, and it's now here in this package. I haven't opened it up yet, so let's do that together and see if it's a suitable fit for our radio. Let's move the radio to the side just a bit. Okay, what do we have here? Hey, that looks like it just might work. Let's open up the radio and give it a try. First thing we need to do is remove the knobs. You can see I use these nice felt washers to protect the cabinet. Let's flip it over now. Now the back panel of this radio required extensive renovation as well. First off, it was brown, so it needed to be painted to match the rest of the radio. But the biggest problem was that this entire corner was missing. So I actually had to recreate and sculpt this corner. And I was also able to even reproduce this reliefed border around the sides here. Again, to see how I pulled that off, check out the link in the description. Let's get the back panel off now. Let's take a look inside. Okay, now to access that front panel lens, we're gonna to need to remove the chassis from the cabinet. And to do that, I need to remove the screws from the bottom. Let's do that now. Okay, let's prop the radio up now and remove the chassis from the cabinet. Very carefully stand it upright. Here we go. Okay, let's put this over here. And there you can see the old lens glued into place. We'll need to lift that out. Let's see if I can lift that out with a blade. I'm just gonna see if I can gently pry it upward. Don't wanna damage it. Might still need it. Okay, I seem to have broken the bond from the glue that I used. Let's see if we can lift that lens out. Okay, there we go. And let's compare that to the new one. Yeah, it looks good, about the same size. Let's see if it's gonna drop in that hole. Take a look from the other side. Yeah, it looks like that's gonna work. We'll just need to trim away some of the lens to get it to fit. Let's put the cabinet over here for now. Okay, you can see we've got quite a bit of plastic material to trim off of our replacement. Let me get a marker and see if we can mark the area that needs to be trimmed. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Let me try to trim away at this with the scissors. Okay, that looks pretty good. Hopefully I didn't trim away too much. Let's see how that fits. Yeah, not too bad. Definitely didn't trim away too much. If anything, I need to trim a little bit more away. Let's see if I get that to seat in there just right. Let's give it another try. Okay, let's see how that goes. Yeah, I think that'll do the trick. 
Let's turn it over. And it'll look something like that. Let's glue it in place. Okay, a couple drops of super glue ought to do the trick. Let's give it a try. One drop. I'm gonna put one now at the 45 degree angles. Okay, what I don't wanna have happen is for me to insert that lens and have the super glue pull out on the other side. So I'm gonna spread this out just a little bit, just to thin it. I think that's pretty good. Let's drop the lens in place. I think the lens bulges out a bit on the front, so let me get something to lift up this cabinet while that dries. Okay, I'm gonna let that set a little bit. I'm a little concerned that I didn't use enough glue and that the lens perhaps isn't seated close enough to the cabinet to make full contact. So this first try may not do the job. If not, we'll try it again. Yeah, you know what? That is not doing the job. Uh, let's try it, uh, let's try it again. I think I might use a little more glue this time. Okay, let's try it with a little more glue. I was trying not to use too much glue, but I may have been too conservative. Oh, little Fluxy made a mess, didn't he? Yeah, I'm afraid I did make a bit of a mess. I wanted this to be a quick video, so I kind of rushed the job and used too much glue. You can see where it squeezed out the side and permanently marred the plastic, and my efforts to clean it up only made more of a mess. No problem, though, as our friend Don at Restore Old Radio says it's simple to replace old dial covers by making your own. First, you make a form in the size you need. Then you take a sheet of thermoplastic and shape it to your form with a heat gun. Looks simple, let's give it a try. I don't have the right kind of plastic Don recommends, so I'll just use this old packaging material. And for a form, I'll use this capacitor, which just happens to be the right size. Okay, let's heat it up. Looks good. Yeah, absolutely perfect results. And I didn't even really follow Don's instructions. Let's install our new lens in the radio. Stunning. Okay, let's fix it for real now. I actually went back online and ordered a new lens from dialcover.com. Here it is. Let's see if I can't make a mess of this one. Okay, I'll cut to size. Let's peel off the protective film and drop it into position. Instead of super glue, this time I'm going to try hot glue. Much more forgiving. Now that looks great. To stay updated, please subscribe to my channel and click the bell to receive notifications when I release new videos. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I'll see you soon.